unlike the other two race weekends we had, it is raining, but we're excited to be here. It's uh, the hot phase of the championship, that's for sure. Only four more races to go. And the man who's actually excited about this weather is Calvin van der Linde, who's starting in P2. So that for itself is very exciting because finally you're up in the front and hopefully you'll get a podium. But also you like this weather. I do. Um, I think especially this weekend, I think the Audi struggled a little bit in free practice in the dry. So, you know, this morning looked a little bit different. So we want to play our strengths today and the team is motivated. I'm motivated. I know the boys are going to do a great job in, on strategy. So I just need to kind of keep it on the black stuff today and see how we go. So damp qualifying session has given us a really mixed up grid. 12 of the top 16 drivers have yet to win a race in DTM 2023. The track was damp, some went on slicks in qualifying, others chose wet tyres. Wet tyres were the way to go and one or two big names find themselves at the back of the grid. In the Lamborghini, fellow Italian Mirko Bortolotti arrives here as the championship leader, nine points clear of Thomas Prining having picked up his third race win of the season last time at, at the Saxon Ring. Prining was a winner here though 12 months ago in his home race and he starts ahead of his championship rival on the second row of the grid. Qualifying on pole position for the first time, though, in DTM is Laren Heinrich. Starting from the best starting position, you also want to win. I think, dear God, doesn't want to make it easy for me, but I see it as a challenge, and I'm really looking forward to this challenge. So Laren Heinrich becomes the 11th different pole sitter of the season. Calvin van der Linde with his best grid of 2023 starts alongside. Engine Guwen starts third. Thomas Prining second in the championship for company on row two. His teammate Dennis Olsen starts fifth. Maro Engel, who was on pole here last year, qualifies sixth. Rene Rast starts seventh. Marco Wittmann eighth. And then on the fifth row of the grid, Mirko Bortolotti, ninth, the championship leader, Luca Engster, tenth. Arjun Maini is 11th, Andrea Caldarelli, 12th on his debut in DTM. Mattia Drudi and Luca Stoltz next up, Stoltz with a five place grid penalty. Then on the eighth row of the grid, it's Patrick Niederhauser and Thierry Vermeulen, who's been going well of late, but the Ferraris are down the order after choosing slicks on a damp session. Sheldon van der Linde and Jack Aitken, both race winners, they are back on the ninth row ahead of Yusuf Vega and Tim Heinemann who complete the top 20. Clement Schmidt in his home race and Marvin Dienst are next up on row 11. From Pereira in the Lamborghini back in 23rd. Sandro Holtzum in 24th place. Alessio Deleda and then Ricardo Feller. Wrong tyres in qualifying. The driver third in the championship. 26th on the grid. Lucas Auer is back in 27th. David Schumacher had a crash in qualifying. Rounds out the 28 car grid. The Start Your Engines board then is held aloft here. Let's take a look at this 4.3 kilometre long circuit then. The Red Bull Ring, a wonderful venue. And there's always lots of great action here, particularly at at turn one where they can go three abreast sometimes four abreast but not always get out of the corner as we saw back in 2002 turn five also gives us plenty of moments there are opportunities to overtake to run side by side and that can give us some thrilling moves in the middle of the lap at the end of the lap coming out the downhill run out of turn 10 if you run wide you're in the gravel trap and there could be more carnage there so it's a circuit with lots of undulation a high speed sections and also some fantastic views here for the drivers and the fans to enjoy. Mirko Bortolotti then the championship leader, nine points clear of Thomas Prining. Ricardo Fella is way down the grid and 31 points adrift. Shelton van der Linde, Lucas Stotz and Lucas Auer have got to close the gap by the end of the weekend with only 56 points available after this weekend when we go to Hockenheim for the championship decider next month. So the car's lined up, ready to go racing then for the first time this weekend. Chris Hartley trackside to talk you through the action. And it's a good looking start for Lauren Heinrich from pole position. Kelvin van der Linde going alongside in the Audi. On this damp circuit, some have chosen wets, some have gone for slick tyres. But at the front of the grid, they're all on the wet tyres and it's still side by side. As Kelvin van der Linde, the South African, charges now alongside the Porsche of Lauren Heinrich. I engine Guwen, uh, Lauren's teammate, is right behind him as well as they climb uphill now into the first gear corner at turn three on the brakes Kelvin van der Linde around the outside running out of road he's going to go wide there and it's super wet off the racing line everybody else filters through Lauren Heinrich is the race leader Ayengen Guwen has gone second his team 75 Bernhard teammate and it's three abreast 
in the battle for third place now as they go downhill into turn four. Look at Marrow Engel slicing down the inside of the Porsche and the Audi of Kelvin van der Linde who's out wide. Marrow Engel doesn't get through but he fends off Kelvin van der Linde and Thomas Preining is going to get past the South African as well by the looks of it. So from the front row of the grid, the Audi, the Amp Sports line Audi is going to find itself down in fifth place. Marrow Engel now having a look at the inside of Edge and Goo and he fires it down the inside of the way to turn seven. Has he got through? Almost, almost, but Edgen Goo and he's hanging on for dear life around the outside. This is the view from the front splitter of Thomas Priding's Porsche looking ahead of that battle and behind at Kelvin van der Linde. Edgen Goo and he's just about going to hold on to second place as they come towards the final turn at the end of lap one. Uh, so out through that third gear corner, they go way out wide, goes I engine Gua, but still he hangs on to second place. One of the drivers takes out one of the bollards as they run and sliver wide in these greasy conditions. Heinrich leads, Gua in second place, Marrow Engel in third position, with a good start for uh, one of the drivers was on the podium here last year. And then Thomas Brining, fourth place, Kelvin van der Linde, not a great first lap down to fifth. Rennie Rast, sixth, Dennis Olsen, Marco Wittmann up there as well. And this is Ricardo Feller going absolutely wheel to wheel with Tim Heinemann here. Ricardo has made a pretty decent start to the race here from 26th on the grid. So the Amp Sports line Audi trying to charge through. Got Arjun Miney versus Sheldon van der Linde and the uh, Audi just ahead of Patrick Niederhauser. They're having a good scrap there just in front of this battle. On board again with Ricardo Feller. He could barely be closer to Tim Heinemann here. They're almost close enough to exchange phone numbers, but no move done by the uh, Porsche driver and Heinemann remains just about behind Ricardo Feller. And Feller now gets onto the tail of Arjun Miney. So uh, great start to the race for Feller. He's really going for it here. And we understand there are some drivers who started the race on slick tyres, including uh, Jack Aitken in the Ferrari. And Andrea Calderelli and Fort Pereira amongst those on slick tyres. Too wet for that now, but it might come into play as the race goes on. Ricardo Feller up the inside of Arjun Miney on the way to turn one at Nicky Lauda corner. They both run way out wide. Tim Heinemann right behind them will be looking to pounce and regain a position as they begin the climb uphill now. So a frantic start to the race here at the Red Bull Ring. So Lauren Heinrich having pulled a one second lead is ahead of Ayanjin Guwen with Marrow Engel still in third place. And there is Ricardo Feller now onto the tail almost of Sheldon van der Linde. So pushing up uh, into the points paying positions already from 26th on the grid. We look back at Thomas Prining's view from the rear wing and right behind him now is Kelvin van der Linde. So van der Linde trying to come back now after losing all those places on the first lap of the race. Uh, side by side, Kelvin van der Linde in the Ab Sports line out. He has got his nose in front. Uh, is it going to be enough, though? He's on the outside line on the way into turn three. No is the answer. Thomas Priding just about fends him off for the time being. But this is nose to tail stuff, and Van der Linde looks the quicker of the two for now. And Van der Linde will have to try the outside line at turn four. The inside line is covered. You're on board with Thomas Priding. The Austrian sees the South African nose ahead, but he also knows he's got the inside line. The Porsche into turn four stays ahead in the Manti EMA car of Thomas Priding coming back under pressure now as they spiral down through the right hander at turn five into the left at turn six. Here comes Kelvin van der Linde once more. Absolutely wing mirror to wing mirror here with Thomas Priding. Fantastic racing, brilliant move all the way around the outside. That's commitment and Kelvin van der Linde gets himself back up into fourth place. So a great move that. Thomas Pranik, of course, is thinking about championship points. Kelvin van der Linde really isn't at the moment. He's outside the top six in the standings and he's looking for his uh, second podium finish of the season. He's also the teammate, of course, to Ricardo Feller, with whom uh, Pranik is battling at the top of the championship table, or near the top of the championship table. Well, second and third behind Mirko Bortolotti, who dropped a place on the first lap of the race, but Bortolotti is now back up into ninth position. So on board with Thomas Priding, losing a place to Rene Rast, who outguns him. Got a better run coming out of turn one. Got great traction on the BMW, and he goes through now. Rene Rast is a three-time winner in the DTM at Spielberg. But way out wide he goes all the way through turn three. Priding comes back alongside him. But hanging on around the outside is the three-time champion. And Rene Rast in the Schubert BMW just about holds on to that position as they charge back down towards turn four. Here they are absolutely together here and the door is left way open again Thomas Priding has a look to get that fifth place back away just in the background is his uh, teammate Dennis Olsen in the other Porsche 
for Mantai. Still neck and neck here, but I think Rene Rast has got the job done on the way into the left-hander at turn six. So good start for Rene Rast, who was quickest in the dry conditions on Thursday in the pre-weekend test. Uh, now, Kelvin van der Linde has got himself onto the tail of Ayanjin Guen here as he looks to recover more positions after losing four of the first lap of the race. They come over the crest and through he comes. Another one gained back for Kelvin then. So that then puts him into the top three. Next target for him is going to be Maro Engel. Here's the battle for fifth between Rast, Prining and Olsen. He's good, uh, so he's so Team Radio from Thomas Prining just trying to stay aware of the situation. He's got his teammate for company behind. He's got Mirko Bortolotti more importantly behind. And Mirko Bortolotti is now onto the tail of Marco Wittmann, the two-time champion. This is the view on board. The championship leader then, Mirko Bortolotti in the SSR performance Lamborghini. Uh, we've got side-by-side -side action here again as Rennie Rass gets down the inside of Ayanjin Guen. So Guen loses two places in quick succession and that puts him down to fifth place. It puts Rennie Rast up into fourth position now. They're getting ready in the garage for what's going to be a really important pit stop for SSR performance. Limbering up, we're into the pit stop window. Kelvin van der Linde comes in and he's changed from wet tyres to slicks. Now we saw some quick lap times from those on slick tyres, then it rained again, but now it is definitely starting to dry up. So Dennis Olsen switches to slick tyres as well. And into the pits come Rennie Rast and Thomas Priding. So critical pit stop. They've left it pretty late in the pit window here to give themselves the option of choosing a different tyre if the rain started to come down more. Laren Heinrich in from the lead of the race then. He's got slick tyres on as well. Thomas Priding is released. And so it's going to be Heinrich. Then it is going to be Maro Engel then Prining, then Rast coming through. Uh, but Kelvin van der Linde, having already made his pit stop, where will he filter into all of this? I don't think he's going to be far away. He's had a really good outlap, and it was a good-looking pit stop from Abt as well. So Kelvin van der Linde coming down the start-finish straight. He flashes through the shot, and I reckon Kelvin van der Linde is going to pick up the net lead here. He's going to be the first of the pit stoppers. They're all still coming out of the pits. They've got to get their tyres up to temperature. And that looks like it could be a critical phase of the race for Kelvin van der Linde, who might just have got himself back into first position. We follow Rene Rast as he gets his tyres up to temperature. It's cooler here than it has been for the last couple of rounds, that's for sure. It was 30 degrees at the Saxon ring. It was 30 degrees at the Lausitz ring. It's less than 15 degrees here today. And also, you've got slick tyres on a damp trap, which is going to take a little while to warm up with no tyre warmers allowed in the DTM. So Ricardo Fella also having an absolutely stunning drive here has got himself in the mix. He's going to emerge inside the top six as well, I reckon, once the pit stops are complete. Mirko Bortolotti, he's pretty much the last driver in. There's I think just Jack Aitken to come in now. So Bortolotti switches to slick tyres. Where is he going to come out? He makes his way uh, down the pit lane then. We're looking for Kelvin van der Linde to come charging up towards turn one over the start finish line and Thomas Prining of course to keep an eye on Bortolotti's championship rival so there is van der Linde he's through you've got Laren Heinrich and Marrow Engel side by side in what's going to be the battle for second so Heinrich having lost the lead of the race to Kelvin van der Linde battling for second with Marrow Engel and look at this Mirko Bortolotti comes out just in front of his championship rival first and second of the championship nose to tail but Bortolotti he's trying to get his tyres up to temperature Prining has already made his pit stop the Porsche should have more heat in the tyres should have more grip and he's able to brake later and get through and look Bortolotti goes way out wide as he struggles uh, it must be like driving on ice in these conditions on brand new slick tyres and into the gravel trap I'm afraid is Thierry Vermeulen uh, that's a real shame because Thierry has been going great guns of late he's had six consecutive top 10 finishes he's got his first top five finish last time out at the Saxon ring what happened oh contact it was with Clement Schmidt in the Lamborghini and then there was no chance for Thierry Vermeulen to avoid the gravel trap. So the safety car is deployed with just under 20 minutes to go. A real shame for Thierry Vermeulen who's been improving massively in the second half of his first season of DTM. So Kelvin van der Linde, Lauren Heinrich, Maro Engel the top three, Thomas Prining fourth, Ricardo Feller fifth, Lucas Stoltz sixth from 14th on the grid. Rennie Rass slipped back during that pit stop phase, he's seventh. And Mirko Bortolotti, ninth the championship leader. So he's losing ground, losing points to Thomas Prining. 
can he hold on to the championship lead? Just three races to go after this. Delvin van der Linde then over the crest. We're getting ready for the restart here at the Red Bull Ring. He pulls the trigger. He hits the throttle. The Audis have been struggling here in dry conditions. And like the BMWs and the Ferraris, they are not turbocharged engines with 700 metres above at sea level here. So it's thin air and the normally aspirated engines uh, like the Audi's engine, like the Lamborghini, like the Porsche, like the Mercedes, will struggle a bit in these conditions. They were praying for rain at Ad Sports Line. They've had exactly that, and they've got Kelvin van der Linde in the lead of the race. They've also got Ricardo Feller up into fifth place now. It's been an absolutely stunning drive from the man third in the championship standings from, remember, 26th on the grid. You're on board with him now. He is absolutely side by side with Thomas Prining as they make their way through turn three. And, uh, there is the view back from the Austrian as he looks right into the eyes of the Swiss driver as they charge through the Styrian Mountains here at the Red Bull Ring. Uh, now a penalty for the number 63 Lamborghini of Clement Schmidt for that contact with Thierry Mullen. Got to go through the penalty box three times. That's going to drop him, I'm afraid, right to the back of the field in Carassa Racing Team's home race here. Uh, so here we come into turn three, priding just ahead of uh, the Audi of Ricardo Feller just behind then you've got Lucas Stoltz coming under big pressure from Rene Rast the BMW has got ahead of him so the BMW gains back one of those places Pandel in the leads Heinrich in second Marrow got in third then Thomas Brining and then Ricardo Feller and there Rene Rast in the blue BMW moving ahead of Lucas Stoltz Lucas had that great weekend at Saxon Ring with a win of the second to project himself suddenly into the championship fight got just over 11 minutes plus one lap to go and we've got a real fight on our hands here for the final podium position between Engel, Priney and Feller. It is a replay of the move from Rene Rast, just got better traction, not for the first time today, coming out of that second gear, turn one up the hill and through he went ahead of Lucas Stoltz before they even got to the sweep of turn two. On board then with Ricardo Feller. Uh, can he somehow drag a podium finish out of this? He's already outscoring Mirko Bortolossi. Uh, so that's a big win for him given his grid position. He was on slick tyres in qualifying. It was not the way to go. His teammate Kelvin van der Linde went with a wet tyre on a damp track. A damp track which took a long time to dry out this morning. Kelvin ended up on the front row of the grid. And then Maro Engel coming under fire from Thomas Prining. Prining fires it down the inside on the way to turn three and gets through. Way out wide goes Maro Engel. Think there might have been a bit of contact there. So he's going to lose another position to Ricardo Feller. Feller up to fourth place now from almost the very back of the grid. A robust move there from Thomas Prining, but he pulled it off. Brave stuff. Maro Engel won't be too pleased about that though as they went through. You've got Rene Rast then just having a go at Ricardo Feller just behind. This is how it looked from Ricardo's point of view. He was just far enough back there uh, to watch the battle ahead. But Rene Rast tried to sweep around the outside of him. There was a bit of contact between Prining and Engel at turn three. And Fella picked up the place as well. Seven and a half minutes to go. Kelvin van der Linde leads. Here's team radio from Thomas Prining. Well, he was on the brakes. He made, uh, could not do anything. He pulled him off on the brakes. Copy. Well, Thomas Priney is talking about that incident with Marrow Engel. He moved under braking. He's trying to defend his position. He's been told to give the place back. If he's going to give the place back to Marrow Engel, he's got to let Ricardo Feller through first. So he gets off the gas. He's got to let Marrow Engel through. That's been instructed by race control. But look at Rene Rast. He's queued up to this and ready to come through as well. And suddenly, Thomas Priney loses three places. That couldn't have been worse for him. He had to give the place back to Maro Engel, but in doing so, he's lost two more places. So uh, frustration for him. Still in the top six, though. Still outscoring Mirko Bortolotti. He was back in ninth place. Kelvin van der Linde looks good here. For a first race win of the season. It'll be his first win since the end of the 2021 season at Hockenheim. And it'll be a real bonus for Ab Sportsline if they get a win and a third out of this fella on for a podium finish. They look like they're going to celebrate their 250th podium in the DTM. Last time out at the Saxon ring, Feller was on the podium, then later got penalised and dropped to sixth place. But now they might get podiums number 250 and 251 with Van der Linde first and Fella in third. They might, they might, because here comes Rene Rast. He wants a podium 
and he's drawing alongside now. And this is the view from Ricardo Feller in the third place Audi, and here comes René Rast, he gets his nose in front. He goes through on the way into the left-hander at turn six, but Ricardo Feller is fighting back. The Audi is very good in the middle of the corner. There's a left-hander coming up. Ricardo Feller is never going to give this position up. After all that work to get onto the podium, no way, he says, you're not coming through. And Ricardo Feller back ahead of the three-time champion. A fascinating late race battle list. Remember, they were both teammates last year. He was trying to bully my back. Bully. He's <laughs> a bully behind me, says Ricardo Feller. Well, teammates they might have been, but they are rivals in this race for the final silverware, for the final spot on the podium. A replay of this terrific side-by-side -side battle between Ricardo Feller and uh, Rene Rast. Rene looking for his uh, first win of the 2023 season. They're on the edge of their seat, but it is a pretty stressful thing being a fan and being part of a team in the DTM this year because there are so many twists and turns. Right, we're almost at the end of the race and the time has run out in this 60 minute plus one lap race. And there is your race leader, Kelvin van der Linde, Laren Heinrich in second. And here's the battle for third place. René Rast trying it again in the BMW, which has great traction. It's real advantage, it's real strength, the BMW, is at the start of the lap. So Ricardo Feller has fended him off, but he can't rest on these laurels just yet. You've got then Maro Engel in fifth, Thomas Preining in sixth, Lucas Stoltz in seventh. And here's a replay of the incident which caused Thomas Prining uh, to have to give back the place to Maro Engel. And that actually ended up costing him three positions. So frustrations for Thomas Prining. That was the move. It was late on the brakes. It wasn't without contact. Maro Engel wasn't happy. And that was why he had to give the place back. Right, side by side again. As René Rast, right at the end of the race, tries to nick that third place. Tries to nick that podium position. But Ricardo Feller needs the points for the championship. And it would be such a glorious podium if he could just, just hang on to it. Here comes René again, flicking to the right-hand side. That BMW menacing the Audi. They both run way, way out wide at the end of the lap. But Ricardo Feller has just about fended him off. Got one more lap to go in the race then. Kelvin van der Linde starts the final lap of what has been an absolute thriller here in Austria at the Red Bull Ring. Through they go once again. And there is a replay on board with Ricardo Fella. Could René Rast be any closer? No, is the answer, because there was definitely a little bit of a nudge there from the three-time champion. Let's get Team Radio. Yes, thank you so many advantages. It's a joke. Copy. René Rast says it's a joke. He's taking so many advantages. He's making it a very wide Audi. Both drivers having a little moan, flashing the headlights now. René Rast is going for it. Is there going to be an opportunity, though? Possibly so. The BMW flicks from the right to the left, shows its nose again, tries the dummy move. But Ricardo Fella is defending for his life here, having attacked for the entire race to get up from 26th on the grid. Good battles going on further back as well, uh, with Lucas Stoltz and Dennis Olsen and Marco Bittman all inside the top 10. Mirko Bortolotti just behind Marco Bittman, having a good race here. But here he comes, Calvin van der Linde, He's about to get his fifth win in the DTM, his first win since the end of 2021. He takes the checkered flag. Yes, mate. Yes, we fucking did it. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Screams of joy on the radio. A winner again, Kelvin van der Linde. I bet they never thought they were going to get a 1-3 finish at Ab Sports Line. They looked down and out on Friday, struggling with the cars. But there you go, race result, Kelvin van der Linde, a race winner, the 11th different winner of 2023. Laren Heinrich with his second podium finish of the season in second place. Ricardo Feller with a stunning drive through to complete the podium positions. There then the rest of the runners and riders after what was a really fascinating race. When it rains, there's never a dull moment and there certainly haven't been many dull moments this year in the DTM. So. There are the results after the first race of the weekend here. There's just three races to go now in the season. Kelvin van der Linde has actually chopped himself up into the top six of the championship. He's not worried about that. He just wants to celebrate the win. On top of the car, he jumps off. He's full of energy. And Ab Sportsline get their 49th win of the DTM. There's the man of the moment, though. Ricardo fell out. What a drive. The drive of the season from 26th on the grid to third place. Wow, what a race here at Spielberg. I don't have the words right now. Man, I see my engineers, they're crying, you know, like they deserve us so much.
what a what a what a adrenaline rush motorsport gives you. There's nothing in the world that compares to this. So I'm so happy. And there is Ricardo Feller into the arms of his team after a stunning podium finish. Especially the last part was quite tough, but it was also not easy in the beginning. But I wouldn't be standing here without my team. Uh, they did a flawless job, like always, taking us in in the perfect lap, fast pit stop. I mean, I'm just super happy, double podium on the, on the birthday of our boss. A fine effort too from Laren Heinrich in second place. I'm over the moon. It's a great result. There's no doubt about it. I'm super happy and my first win will come hopefully soon. So the podium celebrations here at Spielberg and there'll be a huge cheer for this man as he raises the trophy. Calvin van der Linde becomes the 11th different winner of what has been a fascinating season of DTM. The champagne flows. What will tomorrow bring here in Austria? A great, great race here. Round 13 of the championship. Hello everyone, are you ready for some serious racing action? Here we are in Spielberg at the Red Bull Ring in Austria and we are psyched for this race because only three races to go and the man who actually has his 26th pole position in his career is this young man, René Rast. Congratulations, he also beat Bernd Schneider. That's uh, for sure your new personal record and also you have a great ambition to go fastest in this race because your wife is expecting the baby anytime so you need to win this race and go home as soon as possible did i um sum summarize that correctly exactly yes uh, the, the faster i go in the race the earlier i can be home so that's the target obviously to win the race and be quick at home uh, as you said i'm uh, waiting uh, for, for my second child three races to go then in this fascinating dtm season 81 points still up for grabs only six points now separate the top two in the championship. Mirko Bortolotti on 180 points and on 174 after finishing sixth in race one. Thomas Prining and Thomas is ahead on the grid. But it's René Rast with a record-breaking 26th pole position in the DTM ahead of Sheldon van der Linde for this one. On road two, we'll have Jack Aitken and then it is Thomas Prining starting in fourth. Marco Wittmann starts fifth. Clement Schmidt, one of the home heroes here in Austria, starts in sixth place. On row four, from Pereira and an engine Guen and then to complete the top 10 on row 5 Mirko Bortolotti the championship leader and Dennis Olsen teammate of course to Thomas Prining Andrea Calderelli and Thierry Vermeulen start on the 6th row of the grid and then Ricardo Feller after his heroics in race 1 starts 13th for this one Luca Engstler is alongside on row 8 we've got Marvin Dienst and Arjun Miney 15th and 16th Calvin van der Linde winner of race 1 back in 17th place on the grid for this one with Lucas Stoltz for company. Tim Heinemann and Laren Heinrich next up. Laren was on pole for race one. He's 20th on the grid for this one. Lucas Auer struggling this weekend starts 21st. Patrick Niederhauser 22nd. Then on row 12, we've got Maro Engel and Sandro Holzem. The penultimate row of the grid sees David Schumacher alongside Yosef Vega. And for row 14, we've got Mattia Drudi and Alessio Deleda. The two Italians make up a 28-car grid. So the fans are ready. There is a threat of some rain potentially lingering, but nothing like we had yesterday. Jack Aitken then, he's had some bad luck of late. Can he get a podium finish here? Maybe even his second win of the season from third on the grid. Sheldon van der Linde has got to close the gap to the top of the championship to stay in the fight mathematically. Can he get a podium finish or maybe his second win of the season? Rene Rast, though, will be hard to beat. He'll be looking for his first win as a BMW driver in the DTM. So there is the Ferrari of Jack Aitken. That's been going well this weekend in terms of pace. Didn't have much luck in race one, but he is going to be a real threat in this one. Sheldon van der Linde knows he's got to close the gap at the top of the championship table. He's fourth in the standings at the moment. His teammate, Rennie Rast, will he do him any favours or will Rennie go for the outright race victory? And we get uh, Marcel Herscher, the legendary Austrian skier, holds aloft the Start Your Engines board. The crowd building in anticipation. Here then, the rolling start as the red lights go out. We go racing here for the second time in Austria. And it's René Rast 
from his teammate Sheldon van der Linde. It's tight for third place as well between Aitken, Prining and Marco Wittmann in the mix. They go through turn one and there's a spin in the background uh, with Kelvin van der Linde in trouble. So the Audi gets going again, but the race one winner is going to be stone last in this one as the BMWs go side by side up the hill into turn three. Rally Rast on the inside, on the outside, Sheldon van der Linde. Thomas Prining gets to the corner in third place. And Jack Aitken slipping back into the pack. I think Marco Wittmann might possibly get past him as well. Clement Schmidt has got past him already. So the Lamborghini drive up to fourth. There is smoke coming from the back. Oh, Mirko Bortolotti. The Lamborghini in trouble here. Has he got some damage from that opening encounter through turn one? But uh, it might be OK. It might just be bodywork rubbing on the tyre. And so Rene Rast down the hill into the left under at turn six, leading the way here. And looking to get his first race victory since Imola 2022. We've never had a full Rene Rast season without him getting at least one race win. The three-time champion leads the pack from Sheldon van der Linde, Thomas Prining, and there in fourth place, Clement Schmidt fending off the BMW of Marco Wittmann on board with Mirko Bortolotti. Not been an ideal weekend so far for the Italian. Car OK, or has he got uh, some damage, which is going to drop him back? He's got some damage. He's at the back of the field, luck. And he's headed for the pit lane. Disaster then for the championship leader. Into the pits he comes. You're on board with him now. The rest of the field met their way into turn one. Hits the pit lane speed limiter and drops to 50 kilometers an hour and heads for the pits at SSR Performance. In he comes. They're ready for him. And it's going to be a right rear tyre change. He's got a puncture from damage on the opening lap of the race. Yeah, I just got a hit in turn three, in the first lap, which uh, caused a, a puncture. So I had to pit with puncture already in lap one, and that's, that was basically it. The, the race was done. That's going to replay of the start of the race. It was all good from the two BMWs on the front row. Jack Aitken and Thomas Prining were going side by side in Ferrari and Porsche, respectively. I think there was a bit of contact between them as well through turn one. Uh, but there, the contact with Tim Heidemann and Kelvin van der Linde. Van der Linde sent into a spin and others, including Maro Engel and Lucas Stoltz, did a really good job to avoid the spinning ab sports line Audi. And that was a replay on board with Mirko Bortolotti looking back and that was the contact he got. It wasn't heavy, but it was enough to damage that right rear tyre and sending it into the pits. So Bortolotti right at the back of the field. He needs now either a safety car or the weather to change. As it stands, he's going to lose the championship lead from a six-point advantage and have a ten-point deficit to Thomas Prining. Prining currently in third place on course to pick up 16 points, but still a long, long way to go in this race. Rene Rastent stretching his legs from his teammate Sheldon van der Linde. Van der Linde, as it stands, is going to just about stay mathematically in the championship fight. There's 56 points available at Hockenheim. He's 52 points behind at the moment. Great battle going on here for fourth place between the Lamborghini of Clement Schmidt, which is all over the curbs, all over the shop as he gets on the throttle, unleashes 500 brake horsepower and heads down towards turn four now. Just ahead of the BMW of Marco Wittmann, the two-time champion, breathing down his neck, and he sends it down the inside. Fantastic move from Marco Wittmann. That was uh, really good on the brakes. He goes a bit wide on the exit, but he'll be OK because there's a left-hander coming up at turn six, and the BMW has the optimal line. Clement Schmidt tries to come back at him, but the Lamborghini has to give the position away. So, priming in third place. Next target for Marco Wittmann. Can Marco get his first podium of the season and a first podium for the Project One team? Clement Schmidt now coming under fire from Ayanjin Guen, who's been going well of late in the Coos Team Bernhard Porsche. Then you've got the bright green Porsche of Dennis Olsen, the Norwegian, just behind. He was a race winner last year and he's made a season of the DTM with a great win at Spa Francorchamps. Now, the crowd are getting the ponchos on, so the rain has started to come down. We're into the pit window, the mandatory pit window, and uh, several coming in already, including Marco Wittmann from fourth place. But they are putting more slick tyres on the car, so not wet enough for them to consider the treaded rubber yet. Stationary time in the DTM, a good stop is six seconds, a really good stop. You can get less than seven seconds, that is also pretty good. So from Pereira, he's in from 10th place. But a bit of a sticky front left there. So that was a slow stop, I'm afraid, for the Frenchman. Uh, Marco Wittmann is going to come out at the head of that group. Clement Schmidt behind him. And they're coming through the shot. Look, is Mirko Bortolotti. But of course, he's yet to make his pit stop. 
Uh, he was pretty much half a lap down after making that stop at the start of the race to repair the right rear puncture. Dennis Olsen in the background as well in the bright green Porsche has had a pretty good run through this phase of the race but the front runners are all staying out for the time being. I suspect they'll push the pit window as late as they can just in case that rain starts to come down. Now Ricardo fell up battling away, started 13th on the grid. The Audis have been struggling in the dry conditions here. The wet weather saved them yesterday, but Ricardo Feller is having a side-by-side -side battle with Luca Engsler. Just behind is the QC Team Bernhard Porsche of yesterday's runner-up in the race, Lauren Heinrich. So, big battle going on here on the fringe of the points as in comes Thomas Priding. Well, it's a big, big pit stop here. And they had their issues at the start of the year at Oschersleben with their pit stops, but that was a really good one by the Manti EMA team. And Thomas Priding in his home race here, the Austrian driver, is released back out onto the circuit. His uh, mum and dad uh, are here supporting him, and no doubt they'll be heading to Hockenheim to cheer him on as he looks to get his first DTM title in only his second season. So Thomas Prining going back out. You've got uh, Kelvin van der Linde there coming through the shot. He's stayed out, uh, but of course he's coming from the back of the field as well. So Prining is going to come out with nice clear air here. Nobody in front of him, nobody behind him gives him a bit of time to get the tyres up to temperature without having to defend from anybody else. So that's worked out pretty nicely for him. Uh, here then, Ricardo Feller in the blue out sports line. Audi trying to get himself some points here. He started 13th, he lost a couple of places on the opening lap. And uh, he's uh, got Luca Engsler behind him still, just. And then Aaron Heinrich. Aaron Heinrich with a second, second place finish in the DTM yesterday. Uh, Rene Rass stays out, but Sheldon van der Linde comes in. So from second place, the driver fourth in the championship, your reigning champion, Shelton van der Linde, comes in. The South African slows the BMW down to 50 kilometers an hour and heads for the Schubert Motorsport garage to change the tyres. He'll get stationary. Six members of the team will work on the car. Sparks fly from the wheel gun. You change the rears first, then you have to change the fronts next. It's a very slick pit stop, this. He's dropped off the jacks, fires up the engine, and... Uh, Spins the wheels away, sticks though to the pit lane speed limit. That will feel like an eternity. But that was a nice stop from Schubert, and that's going to keep him in the mix. So he should come out well clear of Thomas Prining still. But now he pulls the trigger, he gets out of the pit lane. There is Prining, next one over the start finish line. It's going to be fairly close, but I think the BMW will be okay and handily. He's got his brother behind him, Lux. So Kelvin van der Linde uh, is behind him in the Audi. And anyway, there's quite a big cushion back to Thomas Prining. So out of all that, he'll lose some time as he gets the tyres up to temperature. But I think Thomas Prining overall is going to be a bit further back than he was before the pit stops. So it must have been a good in-lap for the BMW driver, Sheldon van der Linde. Rene Rast then leading the way. Surely he's going to come into the pits next because the pit window is closing in a couple of minutes' time. Yes, he does. So Rene Rast in from the lead of the race. Perfect drive so far. He was quickest in the pre-weekend extra test day on Thursday. The BMWs all went well on Friday, but then the rain came yesterday and still a good result in fourth place. But the car definitely is in better shape in dry conditions. Right, Schubert, change the rears, change the front. You have to work quickly but seamlessly. No stress, no panics. Out he goes. That's a good stop as well. So Ras goes out just over six seconds for the pit stop. And he should be a couple of seconds clear of his teammate Sheldon van der Linde. If all things have been equal, Sheldon will be coming out of turn 10 shortly. Just see him there in the background with his brother Kelvin pretty close to him now. But Kelvin still to make his pit stop and still running effectively towards the back of the field. Still weaving the car, generating heat into the Pirelli tyres. It's the red BMW of the reigning champion. Out over the crest, out of turn one he comes as Rene Rast makes his way up to turn two. So the gap stays as it was. A couple of seconds between them. You're on board with Lucas Hauer. First ever Austrian to win in the DTM, but uh, it's not been a great weekend, I'm afraid, for him. He didn't have a very good weekend at Saxon Ring either. He's right behind Maro Engel, who's just come out of the pits and is warming up his tyres still. Very smooth surface here at the Red Bull Ring, and it's cooler temperatures than we've had for the last couple of meetings, so it takes time to get heated to the tyres. Here comes Lucas Auer. The Austrian needs no second invitation. He's going wheel to wheel here with Maro Engel. Maro, who was on the podium here in one of the races, last season he's on the outside though on the inside and through is lucas hour 
to gain that position. So, Rene Rast will resume as the race leader from Sheldon van der Linde, Thomas Prining, Marco Wittmann. No change in the top four, but Dennis Olsen has come out of that pit stop phase well. He's up to fifth place now. Clement Schmidt down to sixth. Andrew Gouwen in seventh place. And into retirement, I'm afraid, for Calvin van der Linde. He picked up the 75th win for Abt yesterday in the DTM, but no finish today. Now, two Lamborghinis together, two teammates for SSR performance. It's Alessio Deleda. Uh, the Italian ahead at the moment and Mirko Bortolotti, his teammate, is about, I think, to swoop past him. But this is only for 22nd position. The top 15 score points. It still looks like Mirko is going to fail to score any points today for only the second time this season. You're on board with Bortolotti now as he goes around the outside of the leader and gains that place. Right, as it stands, 10 points to the good going towards Hockenheim and the final weekend of the season will be Thomas Prining. You're right on board with the Austrian now. The BMWs have been too quick for him, but he has bettered everybody else here. Marco Pittman came after him for a couple of laps, but Thomas Prining has been on the money ever since. And it looks like he's going to secure his sixth podium finish of 2023 as René Rast heads onto the final lap of the race here at the Red Bull Ring, followed by Sheldon van der Linde. Thomas Prining at the back of the picture, the BMW of Marco Wittmann. It looks like he's going to equal his best result of the season so far in fourth place. Olsen fifth, Schmidt in sixth place. Here's a replay then looking back from Ricardo Feller in 15th place. And Luca Engstler into a spin. Was there contact or not between him and the Porsche of Laren Heinrich? Either way, good news for Ricardo Feller. He's 15th, nobody else breathing down his neck now for the rest of the race and at least he'll pick up one championship point the driver third in the standings not the heroics of yesterday but if you'd offered him a third place and a point for 15th at the start of the weekend I think you'd have probably taken that right on the final lap almost home and dry is Rene Rast a long time Audi driver switching to BMW for the first time this season Thought he was going to get a win at the Norris Ring. A young charge called Thomas Pride. He dived at the inside of him and took that win away. But here it is at last. Rene Rast, for the first time in 2023, about to become a race winner. His first win as a BMW driver. And it will be his 26th career victory in the DTM. He makes his way then into the final two turns. Out of turn nine, Sheldon van der Linde in second place. Thomas Prining in third. No. The checkered flag comes out. And Rene Rast wins race two here at the Red Bull Ring. Yeah! 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 Well done. Well done, mate. Pick up. Maximum pick up. Maximum fuel saving. Well, a great effort for Torsten Schubert's team. A BMW 1-2, a Schubert Motorsport 1-2. Thomas Priding's dad back in the Manti EMA garage applauding his son as well. Third place, enough to put him back in the championship lead. There are the results. Rast, Sheldon van der Linde and Priding on the podium. Marco Wittmann fourth, Dennis Olsen fifth, Clement Schmidt in a good sixth place. And with Angin Guen, Jack Aitken, Thierry Vermeulen and Arjun Miney rounding out the top ten here at the Red Bull Ring. A track well suited to the turbo-powered BMW's first, second and fourth in the race. But for Audi, a difficult day. Uh, just the one point for Ricardo Feller in the Ab Sportsline car. But it keeps him in the championship fight. He stays in third place in the standings. Mirko Bortolotti, though, 22nd over the line. No points today. And he drops down to second place in the championship standings. A great win, then, for this man, Rene Rast. It was an amazing day so far. Uh, my first victory with BMW, obviously, as everybody can imagine. It wasn't easy after 10 years with, uh, with Audi going to BMW. Today was just an incredible day and hopefully it continues like that. You did say that you wanted to be quick in the race to come home quicker. So did you hear anything from home yet? Is it still quiet? Uh, still quiet. I haven't heard anything, but I'm going to jump in the car soon and then head off home and hopefully Get my, my third present after pull the victory. Maybe my, my second child will be born today, so I'm going to rush. And a really important second place finish for Shelton van der Linde. I wanted to do this one for them today, just to, to get the mood back up again. We had a very tough day yesterday, and obviously congrats to Rene for an amazing race. So it is 10 points to the good for Thomas Prining, third here today at Spielberg.
Uh, all in all, I really, really, really enjoyed this weekend and I'm super grateful for all of my fans that came out. It's, it's really special for me and obviously to top it off like this is, is amazing. A really frustrating day though for Mirko Bortolotti after this lap one incident. Zero points in race two, ten points adrift in the championship. But can he still win the 2023 title? We will see. I mean, uh, we will go to Hockenheim with the same approach as usual. We've proven this year that we can be strong and that we are strong, that we are fighting for the championship. We just go there, focus on our job and uh, hope we get what we deserve. Podium celebrations in Austria, win number 26 for the legend that is Rene Rast. We've had some great racing here at the Red Bull Ring, not just in the DTM, but also in the ADAC GT Masters Championship with two races here in Austria. Race nine of a 12 race season for the ADAC GT Masters and it was Benjamin Haitis who qualified the GRT Grassa Lamborghini on pole position for the first of two races here at the Red Bull Ring this weekend. He led into turn one. Mikael Yus joining the GT Masters challenged Alan Valente for second place but hit a curb and fell back. Sam de Vega, who had started from fifth place on the grid, also charging his way through on the inside of Alan Valente. Another driver on the move from the back, Eduardo Cosateng in the Schubert Motorsport BMW and also Maxim Oster in the FK Motorsport BMW. Janis Fitcher had a great view of the battle unfolding in front of him. Max Ostin pushing forwards through the pack alongside Alan Valente, moving up position by position up into third place with just 20 minutes of the race gone. The BMW looking very powerful indeed around the Red Bull Ring. But up front was Benjamin Haitis who led the way. Eduardo Cosateng getting together with Finn Gersitz into turn three. The two cars bounce off each other. Cosateng who'd started at the back of the grid. Finn Gersitz who'd started seventh. And it was the BMW coming through that made contact, broke the steering on the Finn Gersitz. Team at use Porsche forcing the car into retirement. Gersitz was out. Sven Muller was not going to get a drive. Out of the driving seat was Salmon Ovega. In came Elias Seppanen. The championship leaders looking very, very strong. Running at the front of the pack, but the absolute leader, Benjamin Haiti, into the pits. He came handing over the GRT Grassa Lamborghini to Marco Mapelli. Marco Mapelli under investigations for not doing his seatbelt up before leaving the pit box, but it didn't look like there was going to be any penalty incoming. He rejoined and kept the lead after the pit stop sequence had finished. Elias Sepinen was up into second place. Bruno Spengler, great to have him back in GT Masters after many years away and taken over from Max Oston and was in third place. It was Marco Mapelli who led the way. Ben Green had taken over from Eduardo Cosetega and he was pushing hard. This was Bruno Spengler ahead of him, the fight for the last of the podium positions. Ben Green looking left, looking right. Bruno Spengler was not about to give up a podium position on his return to GC Masters. Still, the battle raged on all the way through the final lap. Following race one, race winners Benjamin Haitis and Marco Mapelli were to be disqualified from the race win. Their car was underweight in the post-race scrutineering. Second place, Elias Seppinen and Sam Vega were also disqualified for not being able to provide a fuel sample. This meant that Bruno Spengler and Maxime Osten were promoted to the top step of the podium, taking their first win in the GT Masters. Race two of the weekend for the ADAC GT Masters at the Red Bull Ring had not even started and there was drama on the way to the grid for Ralph Aron in the HRT Mercedes. The front wheel collapsing under the car. The team had to work on it, but they got it back out on the grid before the green lights came on. You saw in the corner of your picture Bruno Spengler disappearing off into the pits. He had chosen to switch to slick tyres. The rain was starting to come down. It was quite a gamble. It was one that would not pay off. Christian Engelhardt from pole position led the field into turn one. 
and down into turn two. All of the cars are making it around, but Christian Engelhardt already opening up a gap over the second place car of Marco Mapelli. The GRT Grasso racing Lamborghini not enjoying these slippery conditions up into turn three. And it was Mapelli who's coming under pressure from Nico Menzel. He went wide into turn three. And then the other of the team used by race motion cars challenging for position. Back into the pits came Bruno Spengler. The slick tyres, well, they weren't working in the slippery conditions. And uh, Ben Green proved that as well in the Schubert Motorsport BMW. He was also struggling with traction. The car going wide into the gravel. He managed to keep the power on, so he's able to rejoin the race. But he was going to be at the back of the field for the whole of the afternoon. The weather couldn't really decide what to do. Sometimes it was raining and then it dried up. Marco Mapelli found himself overtaken by Philip Ellis, the other of the HRT Mercedes. He fought hard, but traction was very much at a premium. Going wide in the corner and in so doing, letting through the other of the team use cars. Mandri pit stop time. Marco Mapelli was probably pretty happy to get out of the seat and hand the car over to Benjamin Heites, but there were issues the crew having to work on the car, meaning an extended pit stop. He was to rejoin the race a long way back down the grid. The challenges continued further up. Petru Ambrescu had taken over the number three car from Philip Ellis. He was coming under pressure from Finn Gersitz. He had taken over from Sven Muller in the other of the team use Porsches. Into turn 10 they came. Finn Gersetz would have had flashbacks to yesterday. He retired with steering damage, having bounced off another car. This time, though, he made the move. It was an epic battle further back. Sam Vega had taken over from Elias Seppinen, the championship leaders running three abreast, three Mercedes, all side by side into turn one. It was Alan Valente who had taken over from Ralph Aron, who came out in front on this particular occasion, but the fighting was going to continue all race long. Salmon Ovega working hard. Petru Umberescu behind him. Meanwhile, Mikael Luce had taken over the lead car from Christian Engelhardt. He was extending his lead at the front. Fingers it's in second. Alan Valente in third. But then Salmon Ovega making a move into turn one. It was an optimistic move. He sent the number two car spinning. He was going to pick up a penalty for that. It was going to remove him from a podium position. It was Mikael Yus who came across the line to take a win. It was a team use by Race Motion 1 2 because Finn Gersitz came through in second place. With Salmon Vega's penalty, it was Petru Umber Rescue who was promoted to third place along with co driver Philip Ellis. There were celebrations all around. Christian Engelhardt, welcome back to the GT Masters. He did it in style. And team use by Race Motion, a 1 2 on the podium. It was Christian Engelhardt and Mikael Jus with the win in second place. Sven Muller and Finn Gersitz in the other team use car. And in third place, Petru Umberescu and Philip Ellis celebrating in style. Now our eyes turn towards the final round at Hockenheim. It is Elias Sebenen and Salmon Vega who lead by 20 points ahead of Finn Gersitz and Sven Muller. But it is all to play for in the final round of the ADAC GT Masters. After this really exciting race weekend here in Spielberg, we're so much looking forward to the grand finale at the Hockenheim Ring in four weeks. You do not want to miss that, so see you then. Bye-bye.